Hey, feeling a little isolated? Check out this video for suggestions on how to stay healthy and sane while avoiding cabin fever. Hey guys, what's up? It's Amanda from TheIntuitiveWife.com. Thank you so much for joining me. If you are new to my channel, thank you for popping in. And if you are a regular, thanks so much for joining me. I am so happy to have you here. If you are feeling a little isolated, trust me, you're not alone. And before we get into the video, this is not going to be about washing your hands and sanitizing every nook and cranny because let's be real, we've all heard it like 150 times and I think we know the drill by now. Instead, this video is going to go over some suggestions to help you avoid cabin fever and help you do activities that will lead you to some type of personal development or grounding. Now, if you've been catching any of my previous videos, then you may have pieced together by now that having a low energy usually results to some type of physical manifestation, including a poor immune system or just poor health overall. So if you have been self-isolating or been told to work from home until further notice or even quarantining, I don't even know if that's a word, but anyway, <laughs> you may be feeling a little low energy or having less energy than you usually do. And that's totally normal. Even I'm having a little bit of like a dip energetically. And one of the main reasons for this is because we're picking up on the energy of the collective. We and everyone is picking up on the fear, the fear around what is going to happen? What is this world coming to? When is this going to be over? There's a whole lot of unknowns. So it's completely normal to feel anxious and worried and fearful and it's fine. It's okay. This is new and strange for all of us. So you are definitely not alone. If you feel a little low vibe, low energy, then here are some suggestions I have. The first is to grab any really any <laughs> meditation on YouTube. This will help you clear out your mind, tune into your body, into your core, and just tune out the noise of everything else that's going on. Now there are tons of great meditations on YouTube, so I'm not going to suggest one or two particular ones because everyone has their own style. I'm pretty sure I've mentioned it before, but when I was first getting started with meditations, I used to listen to FragrantHeart.com. They were uh, guided meditations, they were free, I'm pretty sure they're still around, I haven't checked on it lately. Uh, hopefully uh, they haven't like shut down and I'm just telling you to go someplace that doesn't exist. But if they're still around, which I'm pretty sure they are, I would highly recommend checking out that site. She um, did a really good job of categorizing her meditation. So if one was like a section for sleep, a section for anxiety, a section for health ailments. So depending on what you're looking for or what you want to focus on, she has a really great selection of meditations for you to choose from. Another thing I would suggest is to focus on your chakras. If you have been checking out my previous videos where I did a whole series on chakras and the importance of them and how to clear them on your own, then you might have an idea of what I'm talking about. Chakras completely affect our day-to-day -day lives and our physical body. I would highly suggest starting with the root chakra since that is all about grounding and feeling centered and feeling connected to the earth and to each other. From there, I would work my way up, honestly, all the way <laughs> to the top. I wouldn't just focus on one chakra because your sacral chakra is going to help you with creativity. And if you've been feeling low energy and just kind of blah, you don't really want to do anything. So your shit, <laughs> your sacral chakra and the energy moving in that chakra will help bring a little extra spark to your day to day. And then of course the solar plexus will help you feel more empowered and less frazzled and useless <laughs> during this crazy, crazy time. And then of course your heart chakra to focus on yourself, your family, the health and well-being of those around you, including your neighbors. Just because we are social distancing ourselves does not mean we can't pick up the phone or hop on a video chat to our neighbor, check in on them, or to our parents who live however far away, just to say hi and I'm thinking about you. A little nudge goes a really long way. 
And then, of course, the throat chakra, because it will be essential for us to communicate how we're feeling and how we're getting through this, or to even support a loved one when they're going through a low period or having just a rough day overall. And then, of course, the third eye and the crown chakras, because they will help you connect to yourself, to a higher power, to the collective in a loving way. So definitely check out those previous videos of clearing your chakras, why they're important, how to do it on your own, and I even have um, a video on how to use crystals to clear your own chakras. So if you're new to this, maybe you have some crystals hanging around, you don't really know how to use it, this is a perfect time to experiment because what else have you got to do? Are you really just sitting there in your house? Might as well be productive. <laughs> When you are feeling low energy, low vibe, isolated, it really takes a toll on your mindset and your mental health. So it is incredibly important to focus on the thoughts that are running through your head. If you are finding that you are constantly in fear or constantly anxious or constantly worried, then you're really going to need to pay attention to those thoughts and rewire them. If you haven't checked it out yet, I'm still reading it. But there is a book by Dr. Joe Dispenza. Uh, I'll put the link down below because I'm completely drawing a blank <laughs> on what it's called. But I think he also has some videos on YouTube as well about rewiring your brain. And honestly, his book has been super helpful. It's I've been learning so much from it. So if you're interested in... Um, it's not only about mindset. I was going to say if you're interested in changing or tapping into changing your mindset but it's also about like changing your view of your day-to-day -day and how to improve your overall health and wellness. So I would definitely check out that, that video or that book and I'll put the link down below in the description bar. But focusing on your thoughts is really, really, really important. If you need to, write out some mantras and affirmations, stick them in random places of your house. <laughs> um, if you can handle that little extra clutter, then I would definitely recommend it. Every time you walk past it, say it to yourself out loud or in your head, or put a reminder in your phone for every, I don't know, one or two or three hours, whatever, to um, repeat some mantras or affirmations to yourself. Now, again, I'm not going to suggest specific ones because Everyone is kind of going through their own thing right now. So I would definitely recommend going to Pinterest, checking out some mantras or affirmations um, that apply to you. And I have a, um, not a blog post, I don't think it's a blog post, a podcast episode <laughs> about mindset and mantras and affirmations. So I'll put that as well in the description box below. That podcast goes over... Um, how to choose the right mantra or affirmation because you don't want to be choosing something that feels way, way too far in the future. Like if your mantra or affirmation is about money or bringing money into the home or everything is going to be okay around money, you don't want something to be like, I don't know, I'm calling in $3 million by the end of the month. Like, <laughs> I can't even say that with a straight face, <laughs> can you? <laughs> so you want to choose something that feels like it's attainable to you, not something that feels way too far in the distance because it's not going to help your energy or your mindset in any way. So moving on to the next suggestion, I am going to talk about gratitude. And this one is tough. Yesterday, day before yesterday, I was flipping through my phone, flipping through some articles, and every single article was about coronavirus, was about sanitation, was about layoffs, and it's just, it was too much. So paying attention, first of all, to what you are focusing on and what you're surrounding yourself with is going to help you a lot with your mindset and your overall energy. When you are focusing on gratitude and being grateful and the things that are happening right now in your life, that is also going to help you raise your energy. Not saying at all to completely tune out the world and put your head in the sand and not listen or read any of those articles or news, daily news. <laughs> I don't even know what they're called. I 
I don't watch the news. Sorry. I don't, I don't. Anyway, feeling grateful during these times can be really, really difficult. And it's so important to not be hard on yourself when you are trying to find things that are grateful. If you're just sitting there and you're like, oh, this all sucks. Like, it's okay. Just take a deep breath. This doesn't all suck. This is difficult, but it doesn't suck. Sucking would imply that it's not working for you. And this is just a little blip in our radar. So instead of focusing on how our routine has changed or how we can't leave the house, let's think maybe about, <laughs> even though they may be driving us crazy, <laughs> let's think about how we are able to now spend one-on-one -on -one time with our families. It's time that we maybe wouldn't be able to spend because we're commuting back and forth to work and kids are going to school and we're stressed out from our entire day and we can't really wind down. Like there's so many things that get in our way day to day. And now all the excuses and all the distractions are gone. So this is a perfect time to just spend time with our family and with ourselves, setting some boundaries because we're going stir crazy and they're driving us crazy and it can be just a little much. So focusing on the gratitude of being able to spend time with them or now being able to spend an hour reading the book that you've been wanting to look forward to or just this morning, like yesterday, yesterday was the first day of spring as I'm recording this. And this morning I went to go let my dog out and it was beautiful outside. It was perfect. It was like 12 degrees Celsius. For those Americans out there, don't panic. 12 degrees Celsius. There was a really light breeze. It was perfect. You could hear the birds chirping. It had just finished raining, so you could hear the, the water droplets falling from the roof and hitting the deck. It was like a perfect morning to wake up to. And if I had been so focused on the fear and the anxiety and being cooped up today, which obviously I don't want to be cooped up today, but the fact that I could just open the door and walk outside and feel the breeze and just reconnect was amazing. So focus on those teensy tiny little things because they're really going to help you get through this ridiculous time. Now moving on to the next set of suggestions. This is all around personal development as a whole. I myself tend to get pretty lazy when I'm hanging out at home <laughs> and I am less productive if I don't have certain things in my calendar to block to help me focus on things. So on days where I know I'm going to have the house to myself, I usually set things in my calendar and say from this time to this time, I'm going to be doing this, this time to this time. And even if I, you know, go off track a little bit. I feel way more productive knowing that I was able to stick to some type of schedule or routine. So if you are one of those people, please don't feel weird to put things in your calendar to help you stay focused and on track. Because the last thing you need while you're feeling stir crazy is to now feel like you're not productive and not getting things done and feeling like a lazy bones. And not that that's not okay because we can all have those days, but if you start to feel extra anxious because you're feeling lazy every single day and you have these big plans <laughs> for being at home, then I would highly suggest doing uh, like time blocks in your phone or on your calendar. And those time blocks can don't have to be about decluttering, although I would highly suggest it because it is really going to help you with your mindset and the overall energy of your body and the home. But what I was going to say is your time blocks can be something like if you like to watch Netflix and you just don't want to get carried away, set yourself for an hour and then go do something like load the dishwasher, empty the dishwasher. Or if you don't even want to do that, because I'm like, <laughs> I don't even want to say I'm afraid of, but uh, I'm super worried that there are way too many people out there just laying there watching Netflix all day, all night, every day, and just where they could be doing so much more for themselves, not like around the house, like who cares about chores, for themselves. <laughs> 
So if you are getting bored of Netflix or you don't want to be spending all your time on Netflix, I would suggest checking out Gaia TV. Um, I've seen the previews for it. I have not purchased the subscription, but from what I've seen, it looks incredible. There were even some of the episodes on Gaia TV that were in uh, my local library on DVD. So I was able to grab those and I'm going through those right now. So I'll let you know <laughs> how they were. But if you're looking for some type of personal development or self-help or even just something a little higher vibe, check out Gaia TV. Some other personal development suggestions are doing some e-courses. There are things like Udemy and Coursecraft or um, even Hay House has some online courses that you can check out. I myself have taken a course on Hay House. I was not disappointed. Um, I've also taken courses on Udemy and they're just... They're a great way to fill your time while you're learning something new, which in and itself can be a little bit exciting and will help you tune out some other things that are happening in your day to day. And of course, this would not be a video <laughs> if I did not say anything about journaling. If you know me at all, <laughs> you know that I am obsessed with journaling journaling every single day, journaling about anything that comes to mind. This is a really great time to set a, a spiritual routine, I guess you could call it, if you want to get up at the same time every day and put in a little bit of journaling in the morning before the rest of the house wakes up. Or if you want to spend the morning or just before bed writing out some things that you're grateful for. Just something to focus on anything but the outside world <laughs> and it definitely helps to get out of your head because if you're anything like me you will overthink over and over and over and over to the point where it just drives you crazy so get it out of your head write it down in a journal it doesn't need to be a fancy journal as beautiful as they are really any piece of paper will do the trick will do the trick. <laughs> a little bit of a slur there, I promise. It's a little too early for me to start drinking. I have not started drinking before I recorded this video. <laughs> Some other suggestions are movement. I know that gyms are closed. That does not mean you can't take the dog for a walk or go outside, walk around the block, go take your kids to the park. You can do some light stretches inside. You can do some yoga, especially some kundalini yoga. If you're looking to tune in more to yourself, kundalini yoga is incredible for that. You can also uh, hang out and start reading that book that you have had your eye on for so long. And if you can't get to the library or you don't have a physical book, and I know it's, you know, people are worried right now about the screen time and all that stuff. But, you know, you work with what you got. So there are tons of apps that you can download or you can um, buy the ebooks on Amazon Kindle, read them from your device. There are some really, really great books out there. Actually, um, I really like Girl Stop Apologizing by Rachel Hollis and Rise Sister Rise by Rebecca Campbell. Um, there's another one by Elizabeth Gilbert, and I'm completely drawing a blank on it. And I haven't read this one yet, but it's on my list of books to read. Everything is Figure Outable by Marie Forleo. If you have not been following her, I've never heard of her. <laughs> um, well, you're on YouTube right now, so go check out Marie Forleo. She's pretty cool. So let's just really quickly summarize some suggestions of things that you can do while you are stuck at home but still manage to be productive and grounded and focus somewhat on personal development. This is in no particular order, some meditations, some chakra clearing, working with crystals, journaling, ebooks, Gaia TV, yoga, exercise in any way, shape or form, focusing on gratitude, journaling, mindset, mantras, affirmations, oh, and if you are um, feeling a little bit low vibe, another thing I would recommend is EFT tapping. One of my favorite all-time tapping videos is actually on YouTube. It's called Tapping for Miracles by Margaret Lynch. If I remember, I will put the link in the description box below. Um, anytime I'm feeling just kind of blah, 
especially for like two or three days in a row and I feel like I just can't pull myself out of it, I'll head over to that tapping video and I'll just tap for miracles. <laughs> and seriously, nine times out of 10, 9.5 times out of 10, I end up feeling so much better than I did before I started. Something about that video just pulls me out of my funk. So if you haven't checked out Tapping or Margaret Lynch, then you could definitely check out Tapping for Miracles. Um, it's something I highly, highly recommend. So that is my list of suggestions. I hope that you are not going too stir crazy and I really do hope that something on this list will help you or have has triggered something in you, some type of inspiration maybe, but just know that no matter what is going on, you are not alone and we are all in this together. So here's to our sanity. <laughs> I hope you guys have a great day. Let me know in the comments, like what are you doing to keep yourself sane <laughs> and from going stir crazy? I really would love to know in the comments. So I hope to hear from you and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.